Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I recorded the intro video for the Semislav defense and as per my schedule I'm going to play a training game in the variation. For today I'm just going to play the Semislav. I have the black side against the patron Nigel uh, and we don't know what we are going to play. In the specific videos on variations we are going to play in the specific variations today uh, he can choose to play whatever he wants, and I can choose to play whatever I want. We are playing a 15 plus 15 game uh, from the move e6. Let me just say good luck. Uh, starting with the move e6 for black. So once we enter the semi-slav, we can both deviate and choose whatever, whatever we want. Nigel has a, a lower rating than me, uh, but that doesn't matter. The point of this is to show you the theoretical video I did that day in practice. So let's go, d5. And Nigel and I were discussing the Semislav during a Skype call recently uh, and we answered some questions in the opening. So he's not as familiar in it because uh, he doesn't have experience playing it, but uh, I'm guessing he has prepared something. Okay, here is where we start. Now e3, bishop g5, uh, are two ma main moves. Uh, he can also take on d5 immediately. And let's see what he wants to do. e3 usually leads to slower positions, Meran positions, uh, and bishop g5 use, leads to crazier positions. I was going to play the Botvinnik Semislav if he played uh, bishop g5, but now let's see what he has prepared. He can play queen c2, going for the anti Merans. He can also play bishop. Okay, anti Meran. Okay. Now, uh, the normal move, instead of queen c2, is bishop d3 and then uh, pawn takes c4, bishop takes c4, b5. I plan to liberate my bishop, and queen c2 tries to stop that plan and tries to uh, stop black from developing his light squared bishop from c8, at least make it harder. Okay, uh, yeah, I've just finished my workout and showered, so I'm really pumped for the game. I'm going to try to concentrate for a while and come up with a plan. I play several different things against Queen C2. Well, one thing I, I play is bishop d6 or b6. I'm not sure what to play against Nigel. There's also a line with dc4, bishop c4 still, even though the bishop hasn't been developed, and then b5 followed up with bishop b7, queen c7, and when white plays uh, e4, black plays e5 but for this game I think I'm going to go for b6 and this is one of the recommendations of uh, Alexei Drev in his book uh, Meran and Anti Meran so I know this line pretty well I'm going to play that Okay. Maybe I should have played bishop d6. Hmm. Maybe I'm going to play c5. 
takes anyway now. Well, it should just continue normally with bishop b7. And then going for c5 later on. I kind of like that. So one plan was b6, the other plan was bishop d6 in these lines. And b6 has a logical follow-up, just bishop b7. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I can still take and gain a tempo on the bishop and then play c5. I could have played this immediately. I don't have to though. That's a good idea. So if I take with the knight, uh, he wants to isolate my queen spawn, which is fine. I really don't mind that, playing an isolated queen spawn position here. Uh, this is why probably takes on c4 and bishop takes on c5 is more common. So now if I take with the e-pawn, uh, my bishop is not as good. If I take with the c-pawn, my bishop is not as good. So if I take with the knight and he takes with his knight, uh, and if I then take uh, with the e-pawn, Yeah, kind of like this position. I'm just going to take with the e-pawn and then go for c5 later on, breaking open the center. That's fine. Now my bishop has two diagonals uh, and the position is quite good. I didn't play something common because I didn't want to get into his prep. Uh, I think, well, you can expect him to have prepared something against normal moves, so I'm trying to get out of normal theory. Bishop d6 was way more common than b6. After b6, uh, d takes c is way, way more common than bishop b7. But this is still fine. I'm going to have an isolated pawn on d5 after c5, which I'm going to be able to dissolve. I can also go for hanging pawns with b takes c and a fine position. Uh, I still have to decide whether I want my bishop on d6 or on e7. Uh, one problem with the bishop on, on d6 is when e4 comes, e5 is a threat uh, to win a piece. So I think I'm just going to go bishop e7. That's safer. Now rook e1, e4 should definitely be a plan for white, but then he could end up with an isolated pawn. I can always play c5 later on, I'm not in a hurry uh, to play the move c5. Uh, if he doesn't take, uh, I can push c4 even and transfer my bishop back to c8. So that's one thing. Uh, and then my knight can go uh, to f8, rook e8 castles, rook e8, knight f8, knight g6, and trying to influence the center that way. I'm experimenting with these queenside fianchettos because I'm starting to play the Nimzo Indian and the Queen's Indian. So I'm trying to make this work in the Semislav as well. Uh, previous to, to starting to play these openings, to Queen C2, I always immediately played Bishop D6. I didn't even think about anything else. Uh, Drev says Bishop D6 or, or B6 are the moves. I've never played B6 up until now. And uh, as I said, I want to try to make Queenside Fianchettos work. Now, obviously, if he doesn't play e4, so if he doesn't play e4 eventually, his bishop is dead. If he plays e4, my bishop is great. So, and he doesn't have enough pressure on the c file uh, for the moment because he still has to develop his bishop. If he goes b3, bishop b2, I don't mind leaving this pawn here then and playing rook c8 and the plan I just mentioned, castles, rook e8, knight f8, knight g6. So this is slightly uncommon for the Semislav, not what I had expected for our training game. But that's that's good perhaps to see something out of the ordinary. Uh, 
I'm not sure what he's considering. He's probably trying to make e4 work here. Uh, it doesn't work here. Because I'm going to take and just castle. Uh, I don't want to take twice because my c6 pawn is hanging after e4, pawn takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop e4, knight f6. Uh, he can then take on c6. So he went for this plan of b3, bishop b2, which I, I'm not sure is such a good plan. His bishop doesn't have a bright future there. Uh, it's it's normal in the semi-slav for, uh, for white. But I'm not sure that's getting him anywhere. So I'm just going to continue with rook c8 now. This is a very natural move. I can play it quickly. The, your rook always belongs to c8 in the semi-slav. That's a move you don't have to think about. Rook c8 is an automatic after you have castled. After that, your other rook belongs to e8. Uh, now, once again, rook e1, e4 for him is even worse because c6 is defended. So if rook e1, rook e8, e4... Uh, d4, knight e4, knight e4, bishop e4, knight f6, c6 is not hanging, he would have to retreat, and then I can play bishop uh, f8 or bishop d6, but I'm probably going to play knight f8 and knight g6. This is now becoming a sort of thematic position. It still remains to be seen how we are going to activate our bishops. Uh, for the moment, uh, the b2 bishop and the b7 bishop are both bad. There's a struggle over the e5 square as well, although knight e5 doesn't work in this particular position, but often it can work. Knight f5, uh, knight e5, knight takes e5, d takes e5, chasing my knight away, and then followed with the move f4 to create this pawn structure, which allows his bishop some life, and also allows me to play c5, d4, and activate my bishop. So that plan I faced in Gradište, against a lower-rated opponent, and they managed to close the position down and uh, have a calm position, in which I won positionally. Now, a4 is is not a very nice move. I mean, it's, a, it's sort of a good move, but it's a threatening move. He's threatening a5, uh, and if I allow a5, uh, then my c pawn is going to be weak forever. On the other hand, if a5 comes, I don't have to do anything. His plan is now bishop a3, trying to exchange my dark squared bishop for his. So now might be uh, the correct time to play the move c5. In my opinion, uh, so c5, and I can then break through with the passed pawn if he doesn't do anything. He's then going to have to move his bishop away. They would have a passed pawn, but he would have a lot of central control with these two pawns. So I'm not sure I want to be doing that. Hmm, do I trade off the bishops or not? I kind of also like the move a6, but not here. I also like rook e8. So my candidates are, are a5, trying to stop his play. Although I'm not sure he wants to play a5. If I don't play a5 and he plays a5, nothing happens. My other candidate is rook e8, just a normal developing move, and if bishop a3, bishop takes a3. My rook is supporting the e file. Uh, and the critical move is c5. After which bishop a3 doesn't make much sense. Because I can just keep the tension in the position. Uh, he could then try a5. And if I do nothing, taking on b6, a takes b6. Uh, and then playing rook a7. But I'm just going to play uh, bishop a8. I'm going to play c5 because that's the critical move here. If he ever takes, I'm obviously extremely happy. Opening up my bishop. e4 is now harder to play. And I'm still going to think hard about playing c4. I'm really not sure about c4. bc4, dc4. I have a passed pawn, but he has the e pawn and the d pawn uncontested in the center, so I'm not too happy about that. c4 isn't a good move, uh, I would guess. I just given away uh, the 
the b5 square for his knight and for his bishop. But if any of the pieces occupy that square, then a6 comes with tempo and he doesn't have any infiltration squares. So knight b5 or, uh, or bishop b5 are not threats. Although if he... yeah, okay. Maybe... well, okay. Uh, he played b3. Uh, with his plan here... I'm not sure if that's b3, a4 is good, because now his pawns are permanently weak. If we ever get into an endgame, then this pawn structure, b3, a4, is very prone to attack. Yeah, I, I played I played something I've never played. He just said I should have played e4. I don't know when, but I'm sure not here. Okay, uh, that's a critical variation. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work because I win his knight. Okay, this requires tons of calculation. So, d e4, knight e4, knight e4, bishop e4, bishop e4, queen e4, knight f6, attacking the queen. And when the queen moves, I can take on d4. Yeah, so I'm not winning his knight, I'm probably winning a pawn. But what if I start with c takes d? If I start with c takes d c takes d, knight takes d, pawn takes e4, knight e4, knight e4, bishop e4, bishop e4, queen e4, knight f6, attacking his queen on e4 and attacking his knight on d4. He would then have to play something like queen e3, in which case I have bishop c5, attacking his queen and his knight. His knight is pinned. I also have, after that, the move rook e8. So I'm sure e4 is not good here. I'm just wondering if I should st start with de or with cd. cd, if he doesn't do anything, he loses the knight. If he takes, uh, if he pushes e5, then I just take on c3 and win the bishop after he takes on f6. Or no, I don't have to do anything. Takes on f6, uh, just bishop takes. Because his knight is pinned. No, okay. Okay. So c takes d, he has to take with the knight. That's clear. And then c takes d, knight takes. To open up the rook to his queen. And then d takes e, knight takes. Knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight f6, attacking the queen, and the knight is under attack. So I think I'm going to do that. Well, let's just make sure e5 isn't a threat. c takes d4, e5. d takes knight, pawn takes knight, bishop takes knight, and then he has to move his bishop, and they have a passed pawn on c3. So I've taken two of his pawns, and they have a passed pawn on c3, so that has to be good. I don't think I've missed anything. We'll find out if I have. Uh, my bishop is now definitely opening up, that's the good news, unless he plays e5, which we just discuss, which discussed, which just doesn't work. I think he misplayed this position with the early e4. e4 has to be calculated precisely, and in theoretical variations it's a very thematic move, but uh, here, I'm not sure. Now, we are going to get the structure in which I've, I'm first going to get to Tempe, secondly I'm going to have two weaknesses to exploit. b3 is definitely much weaker than b6 or a7. <coughs> yeah, he has to take e5 is just a blunder.
So yeah, today, uh, uh, Lucia is coming back. Uh, she was in split and I'm going to cook. And sorry uh, to all of you guys from India uh, for a wrong pronunciation, Murg Makani. Indian butter chicken. Uh, we, we were in an Indian restaurant uh, a week ago and we had it there. We had it a few times already. And I cook all the time, but when it comes to Indian recipes, uh, I'm sort of limited and I only cook the stuff I know really well and I don't know the Indian names of it. And they mostly just experiment. I'm going to use cardamom, coriander and cumin and... 10 or 15 different spices to create my own garam masala blend. I'm not going to use anything pre-made and then I'll mix different meats and veggies and stuff like that. But today I'm going to try out Murg Makani for the first time. Uh, so if any of you guys have any tips. What? I don't understand this move. Why is he giving me a piece? I'm just going to take it. Why did he give me a piece? I don't understand. I don't think he has anything on h7. Bishop h7, just knight h7. This may just have been a huge blunder on his part. I'll propose a take back. Uh, no, I can't propose a take back. Yeah. Okay, uh, now he's just lost because I just play this and any check with the bishop doesn't work. He still loses his uh, bishop on c3. And I didn't want to take uh, the f3 knight. I want to keep my bishop for the upcoming onslaught on his king. Hmm. Yeah, this still just doesn't work. I'm just going to take here. And then take the exchange, I guess. Yeah, uh, a blunder. I'm sorry about that, Nigel. Uh, I think it was a good game. E4 is a huge mistake. Has to be. This blundering a piece, I... Uh, he says I don't feel good. Uh, uh, okay, I hope it's because of the game. Okay, he says yes, it's the game. Okay. Yeah, th this uh, is resignable, piece up and about to win the exchange. Yeah, he says move 13, that he lost in move 13. I think white was better there after my stupid plan of bishop b7. But it's not stupid, but it's harder to play, and I'm accepting it an IQP and... Uh, and going for, for a structure which isn't as favorable. But... He was definitely worse after e4. If he hadn't played e4, then it's still equal. Probably white is slightly better.
Yeah. Uh, so let me know what you think about the Semislav guys. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to be recording five videos: uh, Meran, Anti Meran, Moscow, Anti Moscow, and then the Botvinnik Semislav. Uh, if you would like to play me in one of these, uh, visit the link in the description. And as I said in the, in the intro video, that's by far my favorite opening, and I really enjoy playing it. Okay, what do I do here? How do I win more stuff? Bishop takes knight, queen g5, uh, threatening checkmate. I can also go knight e4. Hmm. I think knight e6 is just enough to to win. No, it's not, because he can take my queen then. With his rook, that would be a blunder. Knight e6 would be a huge blunder, I think. Sometimes the, the threat is stronger than the execution, so the pin is mightier than the sword, as Nimtsevich said. So let's just keep the pin for the moment. I sort of like the move bishop a6, forcing a trade of bishops, and then his queen is attacked. But I also like my bishop on b7. He says, can we play on a bit longer? Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> let's find a precise continuation here. Bishop takes would give him counterplay and stop my threats, sort of. So maybe just... <clears throat> I also kind of like queen c7, although not really. I don't know, I'm I'm a lot material ahead, but it's not so easy to convert this. And if I try something <clears throat> on the d file then he can attack my queen because my queen is on d8 so I kind of like moving my queen to c7 just getting away from the pin and then going for uh, rook f d8 because his knight is still pinned and then I'm also looking forward to moves like queen c6 And my queen is defended. <clears throat> there are no tricks with bishop takes f7 check. And also I could take with the rook and defend my queen. I want to get out of the pin and just play, play it safely. This probably wasn't a precise move, but from a human perspective, if you are material up, just simplify and consolidate your position, no need to complicate things. If he moves the queen, I'm probably just going to take the knight and I, I don't want to allow something like knight b5 now. Now it doesn't work because I take the queen, but if he moves the queen, knight b5 is an annoying move because queen c6, bishop d5. Okay, uh, well, uh, I don't know about this move, to be honest. Uh, I'm just going to play rook d8. It doesn't do much to stop my threats, so. Now I think even knight takes uh, b3 works. Knight takes b3, if he takes with the bishop, I take his queen. If he takes with the queen, I take on d5. On, on d4, I'm sorry. So knight b3 is my next move.
if you can improve on my play, uh, queen c7 and rook d8 were probably imprecise, queen c7 especially. So if you can find a better idea to convert the position after 19, rook a d1. Don't comment on the opening. I knew I should have played bishop d6, which is more common, and takes and c5 earlier on. I wanted to have an unusual position. Comment on the Murg Makani, if you have any advice. Uh, what do you marinate the, the meat in? I'm going to use chicken, obviously, and uh, tell me which spices you use. Uh, I, I saw like 20 different recipes for the marinade, and I'm not sure which one to go for. So if you have any advice uh, for your favorite, let me know. Ooh, bishop f7, okay, uh, just going to take with the queen. I don't think there's any venom in that tactic. Hmm. I, I I don't know, he's just giving away everything. Yeah, this pin is really annoying. Even without bishop f7 and this pawn sacrifice. Okay, uh, no pin anymore. Uh, how do we continue now? I'm actually not sure what he does to defend his knight after after rook c c3. So I'm going to do that. If he tries queen uh, queen e3, then I take the knight with check first. Queen e6, queen e6, bishop takes d4, check. And then I take the queen. He then wins my rook, but queen up. Okay, uh, that's one defense. And again, what's the most precise way to win here? So if I just play queen d5, if he moves the knight, I take the rook and win the queen. Uh, and otherwise he just loses uh, the knight, so I'm going to do that. I don't see a defense to this. Uh, wh wherever he moves the knight, I'm just going to take the rook. And it's going to be over. Yeah, let me know what you think about the game. Uh, let me know what you play against the Semislav. Do you play e3 or, or bishop g5? Uh, what's your weapon of choice? I think my play was okay. Uh, a bit dubious in the opening, but I had a plan and managed to, to, to play it. So, yeah.
Now I'm in a pin, but it's really not that dangerous. Attacks my my rook, but I can just play bishop f6. If he takes my queen, I take his queen. If he takes my bishop, I take the queen. He takes my queen, I take the rook. So bishop f6 it is. And if he moves the queen, I'm just going to take the rooks off uh, and then win his queen because otherwise he's getting checkmated or he is getting checkmated. Yeah, he had to do this. I don't think there was another option. I'm going to add some more time. He said he wants to play on. Okay. Uh, do I have any tactics on f3? Like bishop takes f3. Mm. Or rook takes f3. No, not yet. Uh, I don't know. Make some luft. I don't need luft. Uh, I don't know what to do. I have too many pieces. Uh, I guess I should get my knight into the game. I don't know. All of my other pieces are good. If he plays... Uh, yeah, okay, that's... Uh, mm, I'm just going to take on f3, I think. Because I, it's with tempo, he doesn't have time to take my bishop because rook f1 is check. I can win his rook with rook d1, king f2, check, check, then I lose my bishop. Well, that's simple. That's simple enough. I want to trade off the pieces. He can take both of my bishops, but I'm going to just win on the, on the queen side and have three extra pieces. My plan is just knight d3 check, win his rook. This is the only square for his king. He's going to take both of my bishops, but I'm going to be a knight and rook up. And thank you for the game. Great job before e4, that's what I wrote, and that's, I think, very true. I'm just wondering why I wasn't allowed to play a take back. He says king f2 leads to knight d3 now. <laughs> So he saw the tactic and resigned. Yeah, uh, let's look at the game uh, with with an engine. I just want to explore the opening a bit. So I don't know if you can see the opening book. Uh, yes, you can. Good. Okay. So queen c2. You can see that bishop d6 is way more common. So he. Uh, probably uh, prepared for that, so I went for b6, and after bishop d3, uh, bishop b7 is... Well, I wanted to play this. And after c5, d5, uh, we are in a position that I know better. And here he can take with the knight or with the bishop. Probably with the knight is better. 
and bishop b7 and this is a position I really like and enjoy playing I'm not sure why I should take with the queen well maybe okay and this I have a 3 to 2 pawn majority and I quite enjoy playing this so I wanted to go for this but bishop b7 is a move and playable uh, castles as you can see is the main move cd5 ed5 castles bishop e7 all normal b3 is also normal and castles and now bishop b2 normal rook c8 normal and a4 is the novelty but we are still uh, okay if i turn on the engine this, ha this has to be equal or slightly better for white uh, c5 is not precise but it's not bad and now e4 has to be the losing move yeah but it wasn't good to take on d4 why so i was calculating calculating this as a second option and now taking well what's the difference cd4 is the same the engine on leeches is sometimes an idiot yeah and now we don't have to look at the position anymore so somehow i wanted to get out of theory and then i got into theory back again well i know the plans in the semislav so even if i don't know the exact move orders i know what to do so it's unsurprising that i got a, a, a position with 50 more games or move 12 but uh, as i said yeah i'm i'm kind of sorry that we didn't play uh, the normal merans or something more aggressive but this was fun as well uh thank you nigel for the game great game before e4 uh and uh, the rest of you guys thank you for watching let me know what you think about the game and stay tuned for more chess bye bye